Hey friends, the Lord has just, Holy Spirit has just been releasing so much this morning. So I just want to release a little, something little here. Um, and yes, I am wearing my famous shirt. <laughs> I have a friend, Kathy, who's, who said some time ago, she said, I like when you wear different shirts because I know which video I've watched and I've been wearing like the same shirt on just about everything. Because this is like my most comfortable shirt. It's a Patagonia, like combed cotton. And so I just wake up and I pick it off the floor and I put it on. So that's the story behind that. When they knew God, it talks about in Romans. So first I want to, um, that's, that's going to be the title here, but... Um, First, I want to put a statement out there that was released to me this morning that lust or evil desire exists in the void of not knowing the love of God. Lust or evil desire, which is evil desire, exists in the void of not knowing the love of God. So what's that saying? Lust or knowing God's love is the solution to the sin problem. Because the reason we sin is because of the evil desire. When lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. So to deal with the sin problem is to get to the desire issue. A desire that is fulfilled in knowing it is satisfied in the love of God. And when we're absent from knowing that love, our desire is not fulfilled. Because we were created to know his love. We were created to live in his love. Adam was created in the environment of his love. And then Eve came out of him. They were created in that environment, but they had not yet become that love. There is a difference. You know, so many people speak that we're trying to get back to Adam. Well, yes, we are trying to get back to that environment of love. But Adam had not yet become love. See, when God, the, the Godhead said in Genesis chapter 1, 26, let us make man in our image after our likeness. What is that image and likeness? Love. This life is a journey to become the love of God. And Adam had not yet become that love. You could say he was becoming from the moment he was created. A light was put in him to bring forth the revelation of this love. But he did not continue down that and his foolish heart was darkened. And so that's where I want to take you in Romans chapter 1 um, verse 21. It says, because that when they knew God, I know you're never supposed to start at a because, right? Well, you can read ahead of it. <laughs> I'm not a traditional teacher, so hey, I'm going to start there. Because they did, because that when they knew God, okay, they knew his love. They experienced his love. They were created in the environment of love in the garden. Because that when they knew God, it's speaking of Adam and Eve. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. What's that saying? They hadn't fully become love. See, to glorify him as God is to manifest this love, is to become it. Jesus glorified the Father on the earth because he was love. He became love in the flesh. And he manifested that to all of creation. 
but Adam had not yet become it. Yes, he was becoming from the moment he was created as this light was shining into his heart, but there became a descent out of that love. And that's what Romans chapter 1 is revealing to us. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. What is that vain in their imaginations? A thought came. Is he really good? Is he withholding something? They came into an agreement with the lie. Did God really say? They questioned the goodness of God. And there began the descent out of the garden, out of this environment of knowing the love, of abiding in that love, where your desire is satisfied there. There is, what else is there? We were created for that. But, it says, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Wow. Their foolish heart was darkened by this lie. This a veil began to come up in their heart. Because see, what is in every man is this light that God placed there. Even in conception, they say at the moment of conception of the, of the sperm and the egg, there is this light that, boom, that is God putting this light into us. It says in, in um, John chapter 1, speaking of Christ, that he lights every man coming into the world. He lights every man coming into the world. For what purpose? To bring forth the revelation of love into our heart. But our hearts have to be turned towards that. We must be beholding that light. That light is his love. It's the frequency of his love. This is the lamp stand that's representative in the tabernacle. That lamp stand, that seven branch lamp stand that brings forth the revelation of Christ's love into our heart. As Romans 5 says, that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given us. It's shed, this light, the love of God, this revelation of his love is shed into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the anointing that pours into this lamp and brings forth this revelation of the seven spirits of God of, of Isaiah chapter 11. It speaks of Christ and, and those who are anointed with this. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. That's the seven spirits of God. That when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. They questioned the goodness of his love. Ah, he's withholding something from us. There's something else. But became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened, because their heart was turned away from the revelation of his love and was going, ah, oh, there's something else right? That's the draw of this world of, no, there's something else, right? Oh, if you will worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. And their foolish heart was darkened. 
professing to be wise, they became fools. What did Lucifer, what did the devil say to them? When God knows that when you eat of this, you will be wise like him. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of God into an image made like unto corruptible man. And birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God gave them up says God gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their heart. He gave them up because they chose this. He gave them up through uncleanness through the lusts of their flesh to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Later on it says there in Romans. This love. Because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. A mind void of judgment. That's the descent out of love. Not just being thankful for this love and what Christ did. So the way back in begins with thankfulness, entering his gates with thanksgiving. And thanking him for that love. And, and, having a heart to receive that love, the revelation of that love into your heart through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, through the seven spirits of God, this lampstand bringing forth the light of revelation to our heart. As it says in Proverbs 20, 27, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, the King James says, or it's the lamp of the Lord. It's the seven spirits of God. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. When our spirit is joined to his spirit, boom, there's the light. Spirit of man is the candle or the lamp of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. What is he searching for? A heart in which he can pour out this revelation, which he can shed this revelation abroad into our hearts. These are the eyes of the Lord that look to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards him who have a single eye. If your eye be single, Jesus said in Matthew chapter six, your whole body shall be full of light. Whoa. What is that? Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. You become this love. Because glory is the manifestation of it. Truth is the revelation of it. We were created to become love. That is the journey. That is the journey through the tabernacle of becoming love. I am the way, the truth, the life. Outer court to inner court to holy of holies. The way where we repent, we turn to once again set our focus upon that light, that frequency of the revelation of love and allow it to flood our hearts. As the priesthood, we attend to the lamp. It says in Isaiah 42, a bruised reed will he not break. The smoking flax will he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment 
unto truth. This is the revelation of my love. What is the smoking flax? That is the wick of the light. He doesn't, he doesn't despise, he doesn't quench it. He's like, no, he blows on it. He knows where we're at. bruised reed will he not break he knows you know we're bruised you know what is a bruised reed when when it's bruised you see it when it's injured or hurt like a uh um it it bends over it does it can't be upright in its uprightness in him and its identity in him a smoking flax the smoking flax flax he will not quench those who are not f f receiving the full revelation of his love because it's smoking, right? It's, they're not attending to that light. He doesn't, he doesn't quench it. He just goes, they're deceived. As, that's what he said on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They don't have a revelation of your love. They're deceived. He doesn't hate people that are deceived. He intercedes for them. His love never fails. If he hung on that cross while they were crucifying and said, Father, forgive them, they, they're crucifying me because they don't know love. They don't know your love, Father. This is why I'm hanging here, so that they can know this love. By his knowledge, Isaiah 53, shall my righteous servant justify many. The knowledge of this love. That's what justifies us. That's what makes us righteous before him. That's what heals us. That's what satisfies the desire of our soul so that we can overcome the sin nature. As it says in 2 Peter chapter 1, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the, verse 2, through the knowledge of God, the knowledge of this love. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God, epigenosko, this higher knowledge of knowing his love. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. Whereby are given to us, it goes on to say, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that through these we might be partakers of the divine nature, love, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lusts. Because in this knowledge, this higher knowledge of knowing his love, we escape the corruption that is in the world through lust because our desire is fulfilled in that love and we are transfigured into that love. Shalom, shalom.